Gerald Butts tweeted a bigoted map of the United States that described the South as, quote, basically Christian Iraq. But I've been to the real Christian Iraq, and I have seen firsthand how Butts' liberal policies have failed the survivors of the genocide there. Is cancel culture going to finally get one of its best Canadian cheerleaders? Well, let's see what I can do to help it along. Gerald Butts spent most of Thursday trending on Twitter. However, you would never know this if you relied on the Liberal Media Party for all of your news. You see, they want to memory hold this whole thing just as much as old Jerry does. You see, the former principal secretary and bestie forever to the pair of socks and fancy head of hair we have leading this country, Justin Trudeau, tweeted something well, frankly, pretty stupid and even racist about our closest ally, the United States. And then Gerald Butts tried to lie about the whole thing. Let me take you through what happened. Gerald Butts was chit-chatting on Twitter back and forth with his new boss at the consulting firm Eurasia Group, a guy named Ian Bremner, a thing better left to private text messages as poor simple Jerry soon learned, because old Jer was on a tear and he tweeted some sort of map of every bigoted trope about Americans I have ever seen and some I didn't even know about. Look at this map, tweeted as a quote, helpful guide to Canadians visiting America with advice to bring an American flag and keep your Bible on your person wherever you go. Now let's go through the map a little bit. North Dakota is labeled Lutherans, Montana is beer, Michigan is cold hell, not particularly clever but there's no accounting for taste. Texas was called White Congo and Kentucky was called Whiter Congo. So what is it about 99% black Congo that Butts thinks is bad enough to use as a pejorative to describe the Texans and Kentuckians he clearly dislikes because they vote Republican? Black Africans are some kind of joke to him? I guess that explains why Butts worked so hard to excuse away Trudeau's many instances of blackface. Mockery of black people? Well, apparently it's no big deal to him. And as pointed out on Twitter, Alaska the state with the highest indigenous population in America was called Rape Central. Sure seems racist to me, not at all the kind of thing a liberal focused like a laser beam on reconciliation would say, although it may explain Butts' role in running Canada's first indigenous attorney general out of her job for being too ethical when she refused to bend to political pressure from the Prime Minister to let liberal-linked company SNC-Lavalin off the hook for all their corruption crimes. Thinking rape is funny might also explain the Liberals' approach to the Kokanee Grope scandal, wouldn't you say? But the one that really stuck out to me personally was the description of the Southeast and the Bible Belt as basically Christian Iraq. Mississippi was labeled literally Christian Iraq. I suppose this was Butts trying to make a progressive mockery of those places as intolerant fundamentalist Christians somehow on par with the Islamic State. Well, let me tell you. I've actually been to Christian Iraq. There's a real Christian Iraq. It's a place where they still say mass in the Aramaic language spoken by Christ. It's the cradle of Christianity on the biblical Nineveh plain in Iraqi Kurdistan. And the Christians who live there are definitely not ISIS. In fact, they are the victims of ISIS. And Justin Trudeau is one of his first moves as Prime Minister under the advice of Gerald Butts sidelined our nation in the fight against the Islamic State as the evil Islamists of Iraq and Syria committed a genocide on the Christian and Yazidi communities in their indigenous homelands. And because of Gerald Butts and Justin Trudeau, Canada did next to nothing to help these very real refugees from the genocide escape to safety. Actually, the Liberals made it even harder for those refugees to escape. Ending the fast-tracking program, the Conservatives began to speed persecuted religious minorities through our immigration queue. Christian and Yazidis had to languish behind everyone else, though their religion was their death sentence. So yeah, I guess there is a Christian Iraq, but it's not in America, and it's a hell of a lot less Christian these days because of Canada's liberal government and Gerald Butts' influence on it. I've seen it with my own eyes when I reported from there earlier last year.
Now, after some pushback on Twitter, Jerry tried to memory hole the map by deleting the tweet and then claiming, quote, it was a mistake to post it without reading it more closely, and I'm both sorry and mortified that I did. Now, do I believe that Jerry didn't read the map before he tweeted it? Not a chance, especially when he was offering his critiques of the descriptions of the regions of the United States. Strange thing to do if you hadn't read it. I'd say nearly impossible. Just look for yourself right here. Butts is insisting that this thing is funny. How can he find it funny if he says he didn't read it? And Butts doubles down, agreeing with his boss that Idaho was correct, that Maine was also correct, and the authors of the map share his boss's views on Delaware. So Gerald Butts read the teeny tiny print of those small states and then missed the really big white Congo and basically Christian Iraq? I think that's impossible, don't you? Sure seems to me like Butts read the map and thought that his anti-American and anti-Christian, anti-African, anti-Indigenous, classist bigotry was hilarious. I think Butts was totally caught off guard when the people outside of his sheltered elitist bubble didn't appreciate the mockery. Anyway, this was all pretty gross from a guy who has no problem calling my Jewish boss and the Jewish-owned company that I work for Nazi and alt-right because the map he thought was so hilarious, well, it could have been found on the sickest, dirtiest parts of the online alt-right. This is Daily Stormer level stuff. Anyway, I decided to do something that I've seen the left do a thousand times to conservatives for far less. I turned the tables on Butts. I contacted Gerald Butts' employer at Eurasia Group for their comments on Gerald Butts' tweet. I mean, the chairman of the company, Ian Bremner, was the person the map was sent to. So I think this is pretty relevant. Here's what I wrote them. Hello, I'm a reporter for Rebel News and I'm doing a story on a senior employee of Eurasia Group. Gerald Butts recently posted a now-deleted map on his Twitter account denigrating parts of the U.S. as White Congo, basically Christian Iraq, literally Christian Iraq, Rape Central, Whiter Congo, Hell, and Narcotic Central, with the screenshots attached. The map was panned as anti-Christian, anti-African, classist, and racist, and butts trended on Twitter when Canadians expressed their outrage. Butts has a reported history of questionable conduct with regard to visible minorities. He played an integral role in the firing of Canada's first Indigenous female Attorney General, Jody Wilson-Raybould, for resisting political pressure to cut a sweetheart deal to help SNC-Lavalin avoid prosecution for corruption. And then, of course, I attached a, an article in case the good folks at Eurasia Group needed clarity. I go on. Butts was also a close friend and advisor to Justin Trudeau during his three instances of blackface. Given the recent climate and discussion around racism, do the sentiments of Butts reflect your operational values, especially when Chairman Ian Bremner joked along with Gerald Butts about the map on Twitter? Again, screenshot attached. I gave these folks a deadline of 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Monday, so plenty of time to scramble up a response. If I hear back from them, I'll let you know. But I also went just one step further. Eurasia Group used to publish a client list, but they stopped. And in retrospect, that's probably a smart idea. The earliest client list I could find was for 2005. That isn't all that helpful. But I do know of two clients of Eurasia Group that are supposed to be accountable to you and me. The first is the Alberta government and the second is the federal government. I know about those contracts because at least one of them was sole sourced and published online. So I fired off identical emails, one to Alberta Energy, who has a $125,000 contract with Eurasia Group to provide advice about investment into Alberta's energy sector. And the other email was to Natural Resources Canada, who has a $200,000 sole source contract with Eurasia Group for geopolitical research about Canada's energy markets and, of course, climate policy. Now, my emails were very similar to the one I sent to Eurasia Group. But again, I went one step further, asking if in this climate of anti-racism, would they continue to do business with Eurasia Group? Again, gave everyone till 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Monday. 
plenty of time again to prepare a communication strategy. I'll update you if or when I ever hear back. Now, I know some of you are saying to yourself, Sheila, what on earth are you doing? You're a conservative. You don't believe in cancel culture. And I would say to you that you are definitely right. I hate cancel culture. I loathe it. And I know there's only one way to end it. And it's not to refuse to participate in cancel culture because of our principles. While our political enemies use cancel culture to silence us into oblivion until there are none of us left in the public square to fight for the principles we hold so dear. There's a time for everything. The time to turn the other cheek and take the high road, it's definitely over. The only way to end cancel culture is to co-opt it and be better at it and claim a few liberal heads. Only then will it change. We don't make the rules of engagement as conservatives. The left does. And they won't like the new rules when they have to live by them. If Butts were conservative, not only would his bestest buddy Trudeau be asked to denounce him, Every single client of Eurasia Group would have to denounce him too, as would every single high-profile liberal in the entire country. Butts would be wandering in the political desert alone forever. But he's a liberal, so the rules don't apply to him. And the official conservatives, they're taking the high road. They aren't interested in making the rules apply to him. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. CBC and the mainstream media are absolutely ferocious when it comes to conservatives making social media flubs. But when Justin Trudeau's closest friend and former chief advisor tweets something racist, everybody has their blinders on, but not us. We don't work for Justin Trudeau. We work for you, the people, and we rely on you for your support. To support the work that we do, please go to helprebelnews.com.